As we start this school year, I thought I'd begin by telling you a little bit about habits. According to researchers at the University of Southern California, habits account for about 40 to 45 percent of our behaviors on any given day. For better or worse, almost half of your day will be the result of your habits. From waking up, to eating breakfast, to brushing your teeth, to driving your car to school today. You go about your morning routine with very little thought to the steps that are involved. They're habits. As a matter of fact, your brain is probably engaged in a lot of other activities as you go about your morning routine. Maybe while you eat your breakfast, you're checking social media. You don't have to think about lifting the fork and putting it to your mouth, picking up the glass. As you brush your teeth, you might be going over some last-minute vocabulary terms. And again, you don't even remember putting the toothpaste on the toothbrush. The morning activities, like all habits, they run on automatic pilot. They're hardwired into your brain. To understand how this happens, we need to visit a little bit of science. Sorry, I can't resist. Um, over the years, I've spent some time, for those of you who have been here, talking about how we learn. That when you want to learn something, neurons in your brain have to fire, and they have to connect. And when they connect, all that hard work of trying to understand, when they connect, you have that aha moment. When an activity that's learned, like brushing your teeth, occurs over and over and over again, your brain sees that activity, whether it's true or not, as important. Why else would you be doing it over and over again? And so what it starts to do is strengthen that neural connection. It actually insulates it. And the results of insulating it, you may have heard of a myelin sheath or myelinating the neural connections. The result of insulating it makes it much more efficient and faster. Scientists believe up to 300 times faster. And now you don't have to think about the activities that are your habits. When you get into a particular environment, the environment just cues those behaviors to take place. This strong, strengthened neural pathway, this super neural pathway, just initiates on its own. It becomes your default pathway for your brain, the path of least resistance. Now, that can be good or bad. I'm sure you've figured that out. If the habits are aligned to the goals that you have for yourself, well, then it's good. But if the habits are not, your brain doesn't really differentiate, it just knows it's something important, then it's not good for you. You see, bad habits, because they're so hardwired into the brain, are tough to break. But if they're good habits, they bypass the need for conscious deliberation or willpower, and they resist temptation. So obviously, as you sit out there, you're thinking you want to hardwire your brain to align to the goals that you have for yourself. But how do you do that? How do you break a habit? How do you break that super neural connection? And how do you form new ones that will help you attain your goals? Famous 19th century psychologist William James said it best, I think. You make your nervous system your ally and not your enemy. You wire it to support your goals. And scientists believe the best way to do that it's not to simply stop the bad habits, 
but to replace them. If you leave a void, you'll return to the bad habits. But if you replace them with good ones, if you build different neural connections, you're less likely to go back to them. It also takes what it took to form the bad habits. Repetition, repetition, repetition. At first, that's difficult and requires a lot of energy. Eventually, you say, huh, I can tolerate this. And soon, it's actually something that your brain is just doing. It's just an automatic reaction to cues in your environment. Today, I want to challenge you to initiate three habits. And, and some of you already have them. I see it when I walk into the classroom. For others, I want you to really focus and work on these as you go through your school year this year. Number one, active learning in the classroom. Focus, ask questions, take notes. Some of you have, again, a habit, automatic. You enter a room, classroom, and you have the brain-wandering habit, or the YouTube video habit. It's not serving you well as a student, but your brain doesn't realize this. It's just something that you do, so it's a very strong pathway in your brain. Make that class interesting for yourself. At first, difficult. Then you tolerate it, and soon you reap the benefits, the rewards of that type of behavior, and you continue it. What a great skill, what a great habit to have as you enter college. The rewards of active engagement in a classroom will allow you less time in homework, because you understand the material. And homework is the second habit, good homework habits. When you get home, some of you are in the habit of video games, social media, cell phone. Triggers in your house at that particular time of the day start that pathway going. Best way to break that is to go to a place where there are no triggers, no cues to start and cause those cravings for whatever bad habit you have. Find a place in your room that you return to consistently when you get home to start your homework. It doesn't have your cell phone in it, no video games, no TV. Start your homework. Again, at first, difficult, for those of you who don't already have this habit. Then, tolerable. And eventually, you're reaping the benefits of it. Benefits such as, you know, you might have more time because you were so efficient at getting it done as soon as you got home. And that leads me to my third and final habit that I'd love for you to work on this year. And that's good sleep habits. Sleeping and study over, uh, after study has been linked to academic achievement. Researchers have found there's a strong correlation, not just between the quantity and quality of your sleep, but also the consistency of your sleep pattern, which means you go to bed at the same time, you get up at the same time. You're going to tell me you have too much homework to do that? I'm going to tell you, even though I'm the biggest defender of this, so a little bit of a hypocrite here, but you got to prioritize what's important to you. Sleep is linked to long-term memory, which is very important to your success as a student. Practice those three habits consistently, and it'll change the student that you are. I can't stress enough that repetition is the key, so persist through those early days. You will hardwire your brain for success. Remember, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Let's bow our heads and ask Mary for the help we need to persist in forming good habits. Habits that are aligned to the person we want to be, and ultimately the person God has created us to be. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, 
Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, seat of wisdom. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the pledge.